Welcome to How the Heck Have You Been, the show where I call up some old friends I haven't talked to in 20 years and catch up with them, for my sake and for yours, because we want to know, right? But before we get into it, if you're listening to this show, chances are you went to my high school, maybe even in my graduating class, and we are about to have our 20-year reunion in August 2024. So if you'd like to attend, check out the show notes for a link to the event. Also, if you have enjoyed the show and want to just give me a little bit of support because it is basically a one-man show, please head over to artbymarker.com and buy some cool art or merchandise. It really does help and it really does keep me going. Here's the show. All right, y'all, this is a good one. Today I spoke with Claire Chamberlain, who I first knew as Claire Becking for a couple years of elementary school and then all throughout high school. We talked about being co-founders of the LD Bell PDA Patrol, which policed public displays of affection at our school. We spoke about the infamous milk chugging contest she took part in while I spectated, and of all the places her life took her after high school. I hope you enjoy our conversation as much as I did. Just a quick note, at the very end of this episode, I quiz Claire about public lewdness laws, and some of those questions do contain adult terminology. So if you have kids in the car, just uh, kind of end it in the last five minutes. Thanks. There's that beep boop. All right, I let her in. No video yet. No. Oh, there she is. Nope, I, I got a black screen. Oh, I can see you. <laughs> there we go. You're just blipping. All right, ah, what's up? <laughs> hey long time yeah how you been pretty hey i'm supposed to ask that question how the heck have you been oh, excuse me i apologize no you're right <laughs> i've been okay i'm uh it's funny because when we were arranging this you were like i may be a few minutes late if things go sideways getting the kids ready for school i'm like i know exactly <laughs> that's exactly how i've been as well <laughs> my youngest does not want to wear socks well she so first of all she wears her pants inside out because she doesn't like the okay. seams Right. Okay. And so she'll try to, so she just won't wear socks at all. We're really trying to get her to wear socks because, like, PE is important. You're going to get blisters and stuff. And so yeah. that's, uh, that's a fight every morning. And how old are your girls? Nine and seven. My oldest is about to turn 10 in June, which is crazy. Yeah. And you've got two kiddos, yeah, right? How old are yours? Three. We've got, uh, three. Oh. yeah, Eli's 11 and then. Brooke turns nine this weekend, and Allie is five, and she just turned five, so she'll be in kindergarten in the fall. Nice. 11, nine, Yeah, five. so, That's yeah, we... It's a lot. It's a good spring. It's, uh, yeah. But, yeah, no, we, we, we've we gone through those types of struggles. We, um, yeah, we don't like to wear socks either, so, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't work out well, and uh, we like to wear sandals in snow. <laughs> See, I find that I'm okay. I, I'm okay if I, as long as my upper body is warm, I can wear like shorts in the snow and sandals and stuff. As long as like I have yeah. long sleeves and a hat on, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, like that too with the socks though. I remember I used to fold, this is elementary school, which we can jump in here with you because you went to my elementary school for like a little bit. You went to Donna Park for like, was it just a, a year? Uh, actually, I think it was two and a half. I think I left in okay. the middle of third grade. Cause I have an embarrassing story about that, but I'll, I'll go there in a second. So I used to like fold my socks because I didn't like the seams touching my toes either. So I would like leave them really loose and then fold them up over the toes under my shoes, which you would <laughs> think is more uncomfortable. But I still remember this is a core memory of mine in like third grade sitting next to this girl and she took off her shoes and she was doing the same thing as me. She was like, yeah, I do it too. I was like, yes, I'm not that strange. <laughs> this is a normal thing it's normal it's it's weird to not do this <laughs> <laughs> all right so you went to elementary school for a while but then we really knew each other in high school but i remember and this was at my um godfather's mother's funeral uh chicky shilly i don't know if you knew chicky shilly at all but that was mike shilly's not. mike shilly's mom and uh at her at the reception of her funeral for some reason i remember think uh like i jumped back and had this realization that I knew you in elementary school. It's like, oh, that's the same Claire who had braces <laughs> in elementary school, and the and dimples because you're kind of famous for your dimples as well. And so I like, ru I think I rushed to call you or something for my dad's phone. I was like, oh my god, that's that was you, wasn't it? You're like, yes, Mark, it was me. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, <laughs> but it is that big a deal. Like when it you is, like, yeah. you're like, 
I have just connected something that's mm-hmm. been very obvious and my brain just connected it many years later. <laughs> nice. So, so how did you, uh, so what, uh, why were y'all moving around elementary school wise? Do you remember? Yeah. Um, so when we moved to Texas before I started, we moved around a lot when I was little because um, just following my dad's job, he, um, they had a family business and it went under when I was about right when I was born, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, So they moved out to North Carolina for a job and then they had a better opportunity in Texas. So they moved here to Texas and uh, we rented a house and the the house that we rented was in the Donna Park district. Okay. And it took longer for our family to sell our house in North Carolina than we planned. So we were in that rental house for like two and a half years. Oh, and then when good. we bought a house, we bought a house that was in Bedford Heights district. So, nice. so what elementary did you go to after Donna Park then? Bedford Heights. Oh, you just said that. Okay. I, I didn't know if that was the area or the elementary. Yeah, no, it was, that's the school. So we were within, we lived within walking distance of Bedford Heights, which was right across the, so our street was basically like dead or intersected the main road, which was Brandy Casper's apartment complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, what have you been in touch with her at all? I have not. I think she's kind of disappeared. I saw her. I think she was working at like Central Market or Market Street, like during college years. I ran into her randomly, mm-hmm. and she helped us to our car. But it mm-hmm. was like this kind of awkward exchange, and then we never. Yeah. Talk. I was like, I want, I want to know how she's doing. We were all so close. Like we spent so much time together mm-hmm. in high school. Yeah, I, I am, um, I am the worst at keeping up with people. And uh, typically the people that I still keep up with are the ones that have hounded me. Right. Thankfully. <laughs> I think we're all bad I... about that. And there yeah. wasn't even an expectation to, to like keep in touch with people until, except for our generation of social media, right? Like before that, right. it was just every 10 years you go to the reunion, I guess, and kind of catch up. But... Yeah. I mean, like Amy Bennett, I don't, I haven't spoken to her in... 15, 20 years. Well, it's weird. Is... I, we were just talking about her because she was dating for a long time. One of my good friends, Stephen, that met at my, I think you might've been at that birthday yeah. party, uh, but maybe yeah. not where we all dressed up as superheroes, which is kind of a dumb part. It was, that was one of the, <laughs> that was like a party. Where I was like, all right, no more costume parties. I think we're too old for this now. Oh, but I will sign up for a costume party <laughs> still at any point in time. <laughs> I love costume parties. If there's any reason to dress up, I'm in nice. and I'm so glad I have kids. And then there's an excuse for it now that it's, Oh, I'm doing it for the kids. Because it's really for me. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. It is fun living vicariously. And then I'll look at like just, you know, normal, well functioning adults who still, you know, will play D and D or they'll still are into Pokemon cards. Like the guy uh, yeah. I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess you can still have a little bit of whimsy in your life. Oh, I've had, I have had knockdown drag out fights with my children about which one is the best Ninja Turtle. <laughs> we dressed up as Ninja Turtles for Halloween one well, year. Donna and Teller, my, right? uh, I was, I was, I was Michelangelo. It's Michelangelo. Michelangelo is the best one. <laughs> no, is he the sword? Michelangelo's sword, right? No, he's the nunchucks. He's the orange one and he's oh, the see. funny one. La- on the last episode, who was I? I, I, I? So I've talked to, so far I've talked to um, uh, Jessica, who was Jessica Raider. Okay. And do you remember Carmel? No, you probably didn't know Carmel because she was her junior high. Uh, I, I knew of her, but I, yeah. I didn't really know her. And somehow we got into like UT versus A&M and I still couldn't tell you who the mask, which one's the Longhorns and which one. Like, I'm so bad the at like. The orange ones are the Longhorns. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I know Horned Frogs. Go Horned Frogs. Yay. But, okay. Um, so wait, Donna. Okay. So Michelangelo Nunchucks. Donatella was the staff, right? Yep, purple okay. with the staff. Because that was my favorite. And then there's mm-hmm. sword and the little tri, whatever you call those things. Uh, the size. The size, yeah. yeah. The size, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Raphael was the size in the red, and Le- Leonardo was the blue with the sword. Nunchuck seems so. Nunchuck seems like not a real weapon to me. Oh. <laughs> it seems like the like. How do you use it as an actual like martial arts weapon? I don't know, but I've gotten <laughs> whacked with some foam ones. Yeah, they and hurt. That hurt, they hurt. Okay. That, that hurt enough that I'm like, I, even if you don't actually know what you're doing, yeah, it, it's, it's good. All right, so, so let me show you. I've got a little display here. So do you remember oh. some of these? Oh, my gosh. I forgot. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
So I'm showing her. <laughs> now, I don't think this is still a thing because I'm, I'm a high school teacher still and I don't see a lot of this, but we used to make each other signs. I guess we just called them signs, mm -hmm. right? And it was just a sheet of computer paper or notebook paper and you just color it all in. This one says, good luck, Mark. I guess this was my mm -hmm. probably senior year tuba tryouts. Break a finger. Mm -hmm. Learn those scales. I want your tuba. <laughs> oh, y'all! Yeah, we got to tell the the abduction story of the tuba as well. And then here's oh. this one. I still have some of this. I was kind of. That's so, awesome. This was the ransom note you guys wrote me when you stole the tuba. Okay, I forgot about stealing tuba. Oh, did you? Oh, I, I didn't. I remember stealing your car, but not. Yes, I yes. forgot about the tuba. I, uh, my mind has like kind of put those two together. I think it was both. I think you took the tuba in my car. Maybe not. If we did that, I think that was a separate time because I one. feel like I would have remembered <laughs> for my dog. This one says, I'm too sexy for the Wobbit, too sexy for a ticket. I must have like asked people because I found another one from Brandy or somebody that was about the, like, I think I was really upset that I got a speeding ticket or some sort of ticket. And so y'all made me sign to make me feel better about my ticket. <laughs> um, and then here's, I don't know what this one was in reference to, but this was also yours. It says paper doctor, that. who knows? Who knows? Although I, f I found a Katie sign that got torn up and then taped back together. So maybe you taped it back together. Maybe, and we're, I was anyway. going to say, maybe, maybe you fixed one of our signs and we were very thankful for you because <laughs> we took those signs seriously. That was very serious. And if you made one for somebody, it was like a big, it was like, you know, props. It was, it was like your respect. Oh man. We made so many of those. I, we used to, I used to have. See, Brandy and I, and I think Katie Stout too. We used to have notebooks oh, that we would pass Katie back. Katie Stout as well. Yeah, and Sorry. I didn't talk to her in forever either. But like, we would have these notebooks. Um, I think we mainly did it. I know we did in junior high, but I don't know if we did in high school. But we had these notebooks. We'd pass them back and forth, and we'd write notes and we'd draw like those types mm -hmm. of things inside the notebook. Pass. Like that was our note, like a whole notebook we passed back and forth and continued on conversations. We should bring that back. Kids these days, they just do everything those... digital. So lame. Lame. No. <laughs> right? So we laugh. For, I laugh really hard. My husband does not like technology. Like the extent, like he would throw a computer out the window if he could. Mm -hmm. um, hates technology. I'm actually the IT department for our business. So, uh, oh, wow. it, which is a sad thing, but also like people are like, I also, I, but yeah. So my husband's just like, Claire, my phone won't work. <laughs> and <laughs> do something. So he's not the, so the kids are do do digital things as nine and 11 year olds. And he's like, I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And this, that's the scary thing too. Cause you want to try to monitor the kids like i don't we don't, mine don't really have access to internet although they mostly will just stream like netflix shows or stuff if we, we give them screen time but samantha is at the age now 10 you have an 11 year old is like they're asking for phones and like i'm not giving you a phone until you're like 28 <laughs> <laughs> you don't need this yeah it's actually my 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 son is actually pretty low-key and he's pretty good without it all but my my about to be nine year old since she was like five is the one that's been like mm -hmm. When can I get a cell phone? I want a computer. I when can I wear belly shirts? Uh, <laughs> the answer to that is thirty four. By the way, uh, at thirty four she can wear a shirt that shows her belly. Yep, yep. Um, Which is funny because you, I remember you were in a couple during high school. You... <laughs> I actually found some pictures because I was like, oh, let me find my yearbook. I heard you know some people were talking about like how you signed the yearbook, and I was like, I should pull that out, and I found some pictures, and so I was going through them with the kids, and I found a couple with me in belly shirts. So I was like, and we're going through next, that. Next, next. <laughs> yep, goes around. I was thirty four. I was thirty four in high school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was that was that Reese Witherspoon? No, who was it that was in that movie where she's like thirty but goes back to high school? I can't Kate, remember. Uh, not Kate Winslet. I can picture her face, but I can't I say the name. But uh, I know who it is. I know who you're talking about. I can't think. It's another never been kissed, actors. right? Was that the movie? Never yeah. been kissed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. All right, so let's go back to let's go back to high school. So, what are your memories? What are some of your your core memories from high school, marching band, etc.? Ah, uh, it's one of those things. Like I I have a terrible memory, so I just don't have the general just memories of. Like I just have snippet of memories of like standing out there on the field for mm -hmm. learning learning drill and 
Mr. Nolan or whoever coming by and squirting your spots and then yep. having to stand out there and then running for water and just laughing with people and like you laugh for a little bit and then you go back on the field and you did it and oh, the so pants good. that came up to like here <laughs> <laughs> high rise we I showed all... my husband some of those pictures and he's like i'm glad i didn't know in high school i don't know that i would have ever been able to get over that <laughs> <laughs> i don't that they're also they're making a comeback now the high rise pants like really short mm-hmm. on the bottom but super high on top yeah it was I'm also like done. a, it was a mark of pride to get as much spray paint on your shoes as possible, right? I forgot about that too, yeah. You'd like want them to spray your, and sometimes Nolan would sh- would spray your shoes. It was funny too, because his name was Christopher Nolan, who's now a famous movie director for the Batman and all that, but. <laughs> Who uh, knew that that's, we were in yeah. the presence of greatness. No, he was awesome. And then I remember er- Mr. Earnhardt, you know, from the, just from the director's platform be like, you know the bob the builder can we do it yes, <laughs> yes we, we can. can yeah he had a lot of good like rapport like back and forth things with us uh yeah. he was great i interviewed him last year it's kind of cool he just like yeah i out. loved hearing that one he reached out and within like a week i was talking to him and didn't at like a big <laughs> i felt like you know i'm just doing this little fun thing for people that i that you know we knew each other in high school and then he's mm-hmm. like the president of bands of america I'm like oh crap now i gotta <laughs> like be professional no, no this is real no and, it, no that not... was really I, mean, I loved i've loved listening to all the ones you've done because it's fun to catch up with people vicariously through y'all's yeah. conversation you want to know people want to know and then i have i have like people who are like now nah, i don't have anything to say i'm like you don't have, to have anything interesting to say people just want to know what you've been doing actually that's i last year i was going to reach out when you were talking about like hey if you wants to talk and i was like nah i don't really have much to say i and I was like, I don't know, maybe that'd be fun just to talk. We all have something to say, Claire. <laughs> Which is funny. I have no, I have like no rhyme or reason about who I asked to come on because you probably be one of my top five friends from high school. That like, if I had done it in order of importance, <laughs> one of the first episodes. But it's just like, it's just fun to catch up with people in general. All right. So, so back to so high school. You were you were uh, you were a clarinet clarinetist. Yep. And then you did not do IB, right? No, okay, I, I so. you know, the selling point for that was all the extra papers you would get to write. Whereas <laughs> this girl picked her college major based on the fact that I wasn't going to have to take college English. <laughs> so what did you do? Did you, you went in engineering, right? Engineering. So. All right. Tell me about I that. Engin- and did you do TCU all four years? You graduated from yep, TCU? I did. I did. So I went to see, so I did end up doing engineering uh, because I was, I dated a guy for like two weeks from another school, um, family friend, and he, he was looking at engineering at the time we were juniors, maybe sophomores. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, he was, yeah. Sophomores to juniors in high school. He was looking at engineering. I was like, what does an engineer do? He's like, I don't know. They build cars and airplanes. And with the AP classes you're taking, you probably wouldn't have to take English in college. I was like, let's try that. (laughs) And quite literally, that's why I picked engineering. Um, so, but, and so I went to, I was looking at schools and I was always going to go to OU, um, my whole life. That was my plan. Let's go to OU. And I did the campus tour and they took us into the engineering building. They took us into a basement classroom with flickering lights oh, <laughs> and I was like, maybe not. And then TCU, my mom, <laughs> my mom forced Amy Bennett and me to try to go on campus tours. And she's like, mm-hmm. we'll go to TCU and SMU and we'll just they're close by. We're just going to go visit them. And so went on campus tours with Amy. And when we toured the TCU engineering department, the head of engineering was like, he was this awesome guy, Dr. Walter. And he was like, uh, he was like, yeah, you know, I used to work for Sandia labs. I built missiles and (laughs) we blew things up and yeah, this is a pretty good school. And it was this bright, airy building. And I was like, I want to learn from this guy. And that's was my decision making process at the age of eighteen. <laughs> it's so it's so wild how arbitrary most of those decisions are because I had a similar where I knew I wanted to do English and my girlfriend at the time's mom was an English teacher and she was like, Yeah, U and T and uh and Texas Tech have good English departments and so like I didn't want to go to tech because it was so far away in the middle of nowhere. I, I went we I think I went and visited. 
the campus. I was like, this is like a six hour drive and there's just dust and dirt everywhere. And uh, then I went to UNT with um, uh, Franks, Chris Franks, Andrew's older okay. brother who was there. I was like, this is a cool campus. And that was my decision. And their color is green <laughs> and I like green. So let's do this. <laughs> so dumb. It's worse than yours. I know. I, no, I don't know. <laughs> picking a picking a college major based on the fact that I wouldn't have to write papers. I yeah, I don't know if and the fact better. that just a random boyfriend mentioned it. Right, it's like like we didn't research all of these different careers and take you know, it's just. Wild. I remember telling my mom I was going to do engineering, and she was like, "Huh?" But engineers are so <laughs> boring. <laughs> They're so robotic. Yeah. The thing about so. I, I reconnected with another friend, Jesse Gibson, from uh, this a couple years ago, but he's an engineer now. And when somebody says that, it's like such a broad category. Like you could be a train engineer, you could be electrical, robotic. Uh, you oh, know. I'm actually the worst mechanical engineer that, as far as what people think of as engineers. Like so, I don't know anything about cars. I <laughs> learned how to change my oil within the past 10 years. Um, I can't actually do anything very well. I don't know anything about building buildings. Uh huh. So I was an HVAC engineer. So I did heating, ventilation, oh, nice. air conditioning for commercial projects. But like I did, I did like I did aircraft paint hangers, fire stations. I did a lot of military. I did a lot of uh, military projects. Um, I did a lot of skiffs, like secure things, uh, flight simulators. So like you, I did, I did. Can you repair your own air conditioning units and stuff at home? No, I have no idea how they work. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say that's like a really useful type of engineering no. so what did you so no, are you just like on the do. administrative side what do you do no so i take i was like i take so somebody else builds an air conditioner and uh -huh. i take and it's one of the things like i know the science behind it but i couldn't actually repair and i could identify that's the cooling coil that's the fan but i don't actually know how to fix it mm -hmm. but somebody else builds an air conditioner and gives me the specs of this is how many CFM and how much cooling and how much heating capacity and what airflow it has and how much outdoor air can do. And here's your box. And I'm like, okay, so that box will work, but that box will work better. And then I will duct it through the building and, oh, okay. and make sure that this outside room with a whole bunch of windows, it stays cool, but doesn't freeze out the interior room right, that right. Okay. has no windows. And this one ha is an I did some hospital projects. And so this OR needs extra outdoor air because things happen there and HEPA filters and energy efficiency. And okay, so, so all of I took, I took the other things that other people, it was basically puzzles. Make it work. Together. I take everybody else's puzzle. Everybody else built the puzzle pieces and I figured out how to put them together in a project that fit the needs of the project. Nice. Okay. Yeah. See what I mean? There's so many different yeah. types of engineering, right? Like I said, I'm the worst engineer as far as what people think engineers should be able to do. Like Iron Man type engineer. Yeah, <laughs> no, nothing like that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I actually got my engineering license. I was I was a licensed engineer, so I got all the way through that, and then I let it lapse. Yeah, it's kind of where I'm actually wondering if I need to renew my teaching certificate because <laughs> I teach at like a private school, so they're not as uh, on top of like. I don't think you even have to be certified, you know, like legally to work at a private school necessarily, but you know, they obviously want it, but I don't think, I think I might need to renew that now that you mentioned no. it. Anyway. Yeah. We, I had to make the conscious decision. Cause when, cause we, I, I don't do any engineering now. I, uh, we own, we own four businesses right. and I'm the bookkeeper, it department and general payroll I don't know, whatever other stuff I'm supposed to be doing yeah. <laughs> in the office, office work stuff. And All right, yeah, so, so tell we, me more about that. So after high school, you did the HVAC stuff for a while. Yep, um, I did that you, for Did years. you meet your husband at TCU? No, we met in Detroit. <laughs> but you were we, still, because, uh, okay, I ran into you at Pete's Piano Bar and Grill in Fort Worth. Yeah. But I don't know when. I think it was around maybe college, post-college. And you were dating him at that time. Because I, okay. I think because I, I met him and I'm I'm pretty sure that's who you married. That was the same guy. Yep. Well, yeah, it was. Well, it's one thing. I was it a blonde guy or brunette? Guy? Brunette. <laughs> brunette. Okay. Yep. That's my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's Pete's piano bar. Memories get a little fuzzy. Yeah. So, oh no, uh, you were like 
eight sheets to the wind that night. Like you would not have remembered seeing us because I think it was Sally and me there. We just ran into you and you were like, like, I, I won't go t into too much detail, but it was just like a passing yeah. thing. But I, it's yeah. funny. Yeah, I, I'm there with you. Yeah. So no. Uh, yeah. So that's why I married. We so the summer between my junior and senior year, I got an internship with Daimler Chrysler up in Detroit um, for with their manufacturing. And so they they put up their interns in furnished apartments and the same all the interns that came in from out of town they put into a furnished apartment complex so there were like 200 of us interns there and he had an internship he went to weber state in utah um and he was there on a uh like a sales internship like a the kind of the administrative side of yeah uh, Chrysler stuff. And the first day we showed up for our internship, they announced the sale of Daimler Chrysler to a private investment group. So they had mass oh, wow. retirements and quittings and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So all of us interns had no mentors. <laughs> so we were just left basically unsupervised for an entire summer with all of our bills paid while still pulling a paycheck. Uh, <laughs> in the, the second largest singularly connected uh, business building in America next to the Pentagon, uh, unsupervised nice. for an entire summer. <laughs> Sounds like a good way to network. So, yeah, so it was, we met, we both ended there. We thought it was, we both kind of treated it as a summer fling. And we joke about the fact we don't know how to do summer flings because <laughs> yeah, we will be yeah. celebrating <laughs> our 15th, 15th wedding anniversary this May. So nice. yeah, we just hit 14. So we'll be 15 next March. Yeah. So how did you guys did what, where was he living at the time? Was he in Utah? And then, you know, how, how did he come down here? Cause I, you know, he was in Texas. Was he just yeah. visiting or what? No. So we dated, so we dated for that summer and then we dated long distance through our senior year of college. And then we decided that we were still into it. So we were like, okay, well, we both need jobs. So let's see if we can both land in either DFW or Detroit, Denver. And I think there was one other city that we kind of were like, Hey, we're just kind of exploring options. Let's see if we can land Make in the same line, spot. Yeah. We got job off. We both got job offers in DFW on the same day. So he worked for Kenworth, uh, which is the big 18 wheelers mm -hmm. uh, over in Dallas. And I got one with uh, Jacobs engineering. That's still in downtown Fort Worth. Um, nice. And so, so we did that. Kind of like and it was meant to be. It was meant to be. So he we did that and got married a year after he moved down. Yeah. So and then we lived in Texas for six or eight years, something like that. And I didn't then moved up you here. Were here for that long. Yeah, we were let's see. We were in DFW until twenty twelve and then we moved out to Abilene for a few years. For about four years. Because uh, we followed his job, and then Jacobs let me work remotely. Um, Before I was like was one there. of their, yeah, I, I was like the first uh, remote employee they had. And God bless the Jacobs IT department because that's how I know most of my computer stuff because they trained me because I had to do all my own IT stuff at two hours away in yeah, Abilene. Yeah. And then um, from there, we decided we wanted to move back to his hometown up in here in Oregon. And we just kind of kept the our Oregon? ears open. Yeah, I live in Oregon. I'm in Eastern Oregon. Oh wow! I am I, in. So it's like early, in, super early. What time do your kids go to school? No. Um, so there's this very little sliver of Oregon uh, oh, that's, that's still, still mountain. mountain time. Okay. So I'm I'm like 30 minutes from the Idaho border. Okay. So I'm very very Eastern Oregon. I love Oregon. That's like climate wise po politically they're a little wild but uh <laughs> they're like the the wild west of liberalism over there not that i'm not in turn in tune with some liberal ideals but they take it to i'm okay with some level. of them but yeah yeah, yeah. They're, they're, I, i'm not going to go into that because we uh, we are experiencing some of the negative sides of decriminalization of drugs yeah. in the states um that's the big one that i just struggle with but anyway uh we're not going into that yeah. um but yeah. yeah i live in the country i live in a town of 200 oh wow the not 200,000 200 200 yeah so i can show you my windows i have no neighbors 
I live on a farm. That's awesome. Nice weather drizzles all the time, right? Like, oh, it doesn't over there. I'm in high desert. <laughs> oh, so you're desert. on that side of. So, do you have mountains though near you? I bet. Yes. Well, let's see. By Texas standards, I have mountains. By Oregon <laughs> standards, we have hills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so funny when we, we we drove to Colorado a couple years ago, and it's like literally as soon as you get out of the Texas, like you cross to Texas into was New Mexico on that side. And it's like, mm -hmm. then you see the mountains and plateaus. Like, this sucks. Texas is so flat. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I really am in love with it up here. I, like, I really miss Texas. And I wish they were, like, this was right next to Texas because I miss Texas. But we, yeah, we live on an 80-acre farm. Um, and we have goats, chickens, dogs with puppies at the moment. Um, um pregnant with puppies or just had just had puppies three weeks ago what type of dog lab oh that's the she, best i know she's fantastic but um and then we have longhorns cool no <laughs> <laughs> did you know that longhorns can jump a five foot fence uh, i believe it but i wouldn't have and said flat footed that. not running start Flat-footed can jump a five-foot fence. <laughs> They're just like, "F this, I'm done." <laughs> uh, so what do you, now? What do you keep Longhorns for? Is it? Oh, okay. and a miniature pony. And a miniature pony. I forgot. Him. Nice. So Longhorns primarily meat, right? Mm -hmm. They're a meat animal. They're they're um, lawn ornaments, honestly, for the most part. Um, people yeah. will breed yeah. them for. They're a very lean meat. Um, so they're not necessarily a production. I, we also are in cow country. So I know, I know way too much about cows now. So if I go on tangent, I should be like, and I'm done, Claire. I'm, <laughs> I, that's enough. Your seven <laughs> minutes of cow talk have elapsed. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, they're a leaner meat. So they're more of a, I don't know, pet. Slot. I mean, people will still eat them, but they're more of a. Yeah novelty that's right, what i'm looking right, for right, novelty right. Yeah. novelty so people, cool people will breed them and then they'll yeah they'll and they're high they'll they'll raise them and they'll eat their meats and then keep their hides for because they have really they're really beautiful for leather and stuff like that yeah so what do you so okay i'm interested in the the businesses you guys have so we have an auto parts store um if you've seen uh, so we have a CarQuest Auto Parts store, and they're a sister to Advanced Auto, if you've seen those okay, around. Yeah. Um, so Advanced Auto are company-owned stores. CarQuest are in all independently owned. So we are an independent owner. Uh, we are not a franchise. Yeah. So we sell – and my husband is really the business mind one. Like, I just kind of tag along for the ride, and he says, we're selling tractors. I'm like, okay, I'll fill out <laughs> applications and banking. I'll and do the spreadsheet. I'll do the sp – oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, yep, spreadsheet. Yep. Um, yeah, so I've learned a lot about bookkeeping and taxes and payroll and how to stay out of jail for taxes. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> just report them all um, like I do. Yeah. yeah I was <laughs> like, I just pay taxes. I'm like, I'm not I'm like, I'd rather pay too many and stay out of jail. No, yeah. not, but we've got a good accountant. And so, yeah, it's, um, yeah. So just kind of learning how to balance things because yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Um, I wouldn't be able to do it on my own. <laughs> I, I can maybe like, yeah, I, I told my husband, I was like, if you ever die, I'll kill you because this will be like running a stagecoach and like, we're going, but the horses are out yeah, of control yeah. and we might die. <laughs> like, well, then, yeah. Um, Cause as you get older, you're like, all right, the, you buy a house and then you're like, okay, but now I have to upkeep the house. Now we have to like, keep like when you invest in something, you're like, this is going to be years and years and years. You just have to keep doing the upkeep on it like a business you know it's like now we've just got to keep this going or else it'll fall apart. yeah so we do yeah so we, we we sell like the small like small tractors like the uh i call them the mom tractors they're the ones that they're they're tractors but they're like the 20 horsepower one 20 to 40 horsepower so right. we sell tractors lawnmowers side by sides four wheelers auto parts, agricultural parts, tires. <laughs> nice. And that's a, like you do it through a storefront as well, right? Not just. So we have, sale. we have, we have, yeah, we do a bit, we have a business. We do retail business for the most yeah. part. Um, so we've got 
a store. We've got four stores now. We've got one in the town we live in, one 30 minutes away, and then one an hour and a half away, and one three hours away. So. And you own them and then help the ones who are managing and all of that. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Derek pretty much manages most, uh, most of them. We have a couple managers, but it's one of the things we have, and we have like 25 employees across all the stores. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's an adventure. I really think you should have to like, at least in high school, you should have to like plan a business. Like that needs to be something people, because as soon as I started doing mine, I was like, Oh, capitalism, because I was a, I was a teacher for whatever years and you just, you know, it's the government paying you to teach kids and that's it. You get a paycheck and you, you know, you do all of that. But as a business, I'm like, oh geez, profit margins. Okay. So I got (laughs) to, I have to calculate what things cost and what people are willing to pay. And here's how much taxes they want for sales and use tax. And you got to register yourself and report. Yeah. My kids are learning about that because they'll see and they're like, oh my gosh, mom, you have $60,000 in the bank. I said, I know today, but tomorrow I've got to pay a $56,000 bill. So mm-hmm. <laughs> it's about yep. to go away. <laughs> it looks good today, but tomorrow it'll be a different story. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. So. All right. Let's see what's yeah, so. my little note list here. Um, do you remember, because this is this will tie into your quiz challenge, do you remember PDA Patrol? <laughs> oh, no, I forgot about that. <laughs> I do remember that, though. That uh, uh, the PDA Patrol. <laughs> okay, before that, though, do you remember the milk chugging contest? Oh, I do. That vividly. you were a that contestant. That was fun. That was the, so much fun. For the rest of us. I think for you and Chris. I just went to dinner, actually, with Christian on Monday. No, Tuesday. Was that yesterday? No, two days ago. What is today? Thursday. Yeah. So I went to Thursday. dinner with him to Megalitos on Tuesday with some of our Boy Scout uh, family friends, my dad and Scott Master. But he um, he's doing well. He lives right next door to his where he grew up. Like his mom lives in his old house and he lives about the one next door, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but OK, so a bunch of us and I talked to somebody who was there, maybe Katie Paris. It was Katie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably Amy. I'm trying to remember who else would have gone, but it would be fuzzy trying to think back. And we got the idea of like doing, I think it was, must have been Christian's idea. He brought all of the wild Fort Worth Christian ideas to us, I think. And he was like, hey, we should do a milk chugging contest. Well, I think it came up, we, we were talking about, and I don't remember how it really started, but like we were talking about, hey, the human body cannot take a gallon of liquid within an hour. Like, so if you drink <laughs> a gallon of milk, it is physically impossible for you, the human body to drink a gallon of milk in an hour. And I was like, that sounds ridiculous. And I don't, I don't remember who really instigated it, but I was fully on board with it because like, I, I did not have to be talked into it. No, you didn't. I remember that. I remember you being very up for it uh, without much persuasion. And also, I think we went to a gas station and bought milk from a gas station, which is probably the oh. last place you want to get fresh milk from. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it was all in the up and up. And Christian, if memory serves, had a full gallon, and you were only committing I, to the half gallon. To the half gallon, yes. And I both, did only I did not did not make it through the half gallon. No, and we did this we did this at night at Donna Park Elementary playground. Yeah, and I think it was Claire. I think it was you who threw up on the slide, right? <laughs> Down the slide. I think I were. I I remember actually like yelling at one point. Like I was at the top of the slide, and I remember yelling something to the effect of "I'm the king of the world." <laughs> <laughs> and i think luckily it rained that night so yes, we didn't, we didn't did. have to clean anything up so no worries to those who were worried about the kids who had to play on that playground yeah. the next day to curdled curdled milk vomit no yeah. um, i think christian just threw up into the mulch somewhere i was gonna say i think he was a little more respectful and threw up in the grass or something so he's a good guy he's so, so respectful he <laughs> i'm uh, like this hooligan <laughs> okay so but but back to pda patrol so you and I decided we, <laughs> we were going to police everybody, like, making out in the hallways. It got ridiculous. <laughs> it did. I think we had, like, sashes or we at least made shirts just out of, like, gray shirts and Sharpies that said PDA Yeah, Patrol. I think we just Sharpied some shirts and, yeah. It I was like, sense. I'm trying to remember if we had badges. I can't remember if we had badges or if we had sashes. Ah, uh, now that you say badges, I feel like maybe we did some adhesive stickers that said PDA yeah. Patrol as well. I know shirts for sure. Yeah. 
And I remember not getting much positive reaction from the teenagers who were like, look, guy, I'm just trying to get a little banking out in the hallway. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, guys, chill, chill. You're like Christian. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're like, goody, goody. All we're doing is holding hands. Come on. Yeah. Oh, man. But yeah, it got out of control for there for, I don't know. I'm also, I also am a prude. I, I really, I, I'm a little bit of a prude. And, I mean, not to say that I didn't have makeout sessions in the hallways, but I was respectful and went up into the health hallway. <laughs> yeah, where where it was sequestered, where it was okay, the way the way God's good children do it <laughs> in Slant Hall and the health hall. Uh, oh, Miss Tra- I remember. I think I remember Miss Treharn at one point asking us, "Is this like a school sanctioned club or something?" She was like, "What are y'all doing?" <laughs> Do you realize that I think Miss Trey Harn and then who was our senior English teacher? Miss uh, Nichol. No, Nichols was junior. No, was junior year. Miss Metter was senior. Yes. So I think that Miss Trey Harn and Miss Metter, I was thinking about the other day. I think that they are the only two English teachers that I had from seventh grade onward where we didn't run them off within two years, like a year or two. Yep. Like they yep. that they were not gone within a year or two of us having gone through their class. So were you so. were you in GT with us? Yes. Okay. So that's why we would have had all of the same. Yeah. Cause Miss Nichols, she was only there, I think one year. Yeah. Um, because we were all excited that we might have Mike Shilley, my godfather, but he left right, right. before us, mm-hmm. uh, before we got up to junior senior year. And then, yeah, Miss Nichols and Miss Metter, poor Miss Metter. Yeah. She was, uh, you, were you in the class when Joey Berry yep. hid behind like a trifold or, or yeah, I can't remember we were, or a trifold it was a trifold and i think we were all because we were all in the same section i think there's only one maybe there were two sections of gt and we I think there were two but i was in that class with yeah with miss metter where he he hid for like 40 minutes like the entire class yeah. he was yeah. hidden and at the very end she's like has anybody seen joey and he like busts <laughs> yeah. out he's like i'm right here <laughs> that's so good the uh, other one i really remember from miss metter's class was when we were giving our senior presentations to the class as a practice. Mm-hmm. And I think it was Brandy who was giving her presentation on cake decorating. <laughs> and <laughs> that she didn't do. She just, she yeah. was working in the, the baking department at Albertsons, but she never had anybody teach her. So she just bought a cake from Albertsons <laughs> as her. This is what that I did. That is awesome. That is so awesome. <laughs> but anyway, uh, she was giving her presentation to the class and Girl Scout cookies had just come out and uh, Matt Hale was eating oh, caramel man. delights yeah. and he was picking them up and slowly like swirling the caramel <laughs> and then stared at it and then ate, put the whole one in his mouth and like it was like this whole pro- it was like a five minute process per cookie <laughs> <laughs> and I just am staring at him this entire class he's in like the front row <laughs> Matt Hale, I forgot about him. He would, yeah, I remember he drove his car crazily. I drove in his car a couple of times using the e brake, taking turns and <laughs> getting flat tires because he would take the turn so hard that it would blow out a tire to put too much pressure <laughs> on one side. Uh, yeah. Wes Ward, Matt Hale, Wes Ward, they were all friends, right? The trumpet guys, yeah. So, you talk about Brandy buying a cake. I remember Amanda Hamlet. She uh, didn't do any of her IB paper. We were supposed to write this huge, long, like, research paper or whatever. And uh, so she just skipped school that day that it was due and just wrote it, like, all day. Like, she just spent, like, eight hours oh writing gosh. it as she skipped school and turned it in the next day. I like, guess one way to do it. <laughs> that's one way. <laughs> Jeez. And then she left her car unlocked and it got – she got a bunch of stuff stolen out of her car. Oh. And we were like – you should lock it because <laughs> I think it was the, the the thing of it was we were like, Amanda, you should lock your car. It's like, I don't need to lock it. What's going to happen? And then somebody broke into it. Like, that's what happens. So you say that my mom actually, I stressed my mom out. It's not so much anymore. We've been up here for about eight years now. Um, but we leave our keys in our vehicle, in our driveway. Actually at work, I leave my keys in my vehicle, in my vehicle unlocked at work uh, because that's the small town we live in. Yeah, yeah. 200 oh. people you're gonna know who steals it at some point pretty quick yeah so i live in a town of 200 and then the town we actually work in is like 15 miles away my nearest grocery store is 20 miles away my nearest walmart is 45 minutes away like that's how my nearest target's an hour and a half away oh oh i couldn't live 
I couldn't for a while. Is it even a super uh, target or is it just like a neighborhood target? It's a super target. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Maybe. Yeah. But no, but that's, I don't have a neighborhood target <laughs> any closer. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, like, yeah. Although I'm I fortunate. Think... I, I don't, I don't always lock my car either. Like it's so rare in, in safe areas, right? It's like, unless you're in, you kind of know the areas you look around, but I'm, we're fortunate enough that it's fairly rare. I actually leave my car running when I run to the grocery store half the time. Oh, really? Yeah. See, that's a bit <laughs> too far for me. There will be yeah. sometimes like if I'm in my driveway at home and my girls mm -hmm. are in the car and I'm like running in just to grab a jacket or something like even then I'm like eh, somebody could just hop in and drive away with my daughters. So probably shouldn't do that. Yeah, it's a. But what are the what are the likelihood that a child predator is walking Laundry. in your neighborhood in the, the 30 second window? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot to risk, though. So. All right. Well, we're getting close to the end of this hour, but mm -hmm. I have a couple things. So I do have mm -hmm. what you wrote to me in my yearbook. You ready okay. for this? All right. So I... sophomore year was a longer entry than, than junior year. So sophomore year was, hi, Mark, have a great summer, heart, Claire. And then I think I said, don't just do that because you said JK. This year has been a blast. You're an awesome friend. And though you can't deny D-A-N-A-E. So you, you like misspelled a bunch of stuff on purpose and like <laughs> capital letters just to make bother me because I was the grammar Nazi. Uh, I still heart you, picture of a heart. Keep up your pimp tasticness. <laughs> there i'm done because i don't like these things i love you because you're so lots of o's dead sexy p.s call me eek <laughs> so that was good here it is here's the i wrote it out here's what it oh there we go there's all the o's yeah <laughs> and then in my Unless junior year, my junior year book you just wrote hi mark i want your body heart claire <laughs> that, that was it <laughs> junior year and then senior year i don't have because i had like a couple people sign my copy of the hobbit for some random reason i guess i didn't get a yearbook but there are only like mm -hmm. four signatures in there so i looked at mine actually it's just like i didn't yeah, grab mine. i had it sitting on i had it sitting on the couch nice yep wait my, i didn't i can't i must have gotten like extra pages for my senior yearbook because i don't have that many signatures and i couldn't find yours in my senior um, wait, where to go? It was right here. I think senior year we may have just all checked out. <laughs> we may have. Wait, hold on. It was right here. I've got my junior year one from you. Oh, no. Uh, Claire, I'm a rule breaker signing the autograph page. Anyway, this year was awesome. I'm glad we got at least to have lunch together because we haven't had haven't had many classes together. Anyway, we have to keep going to Starbucks. And doing fun things. I don't think I'll survive. Is the point when I'm supposed to say a bunch of cliche junk like "stay cool," "have a great summer," and all that? But I really don't like that stuff, so so I won't. Anyway, next year will be great. Have a great summer and stay cool. Love and kittens. <laughs> oh, love and kittens. Yep, yep, yep. That sounds about right. I love how yep. I love how not <laughs> like yearbook signatures are so. Uh, what's the word? Just like obligation to say something interesting, but it's almost impossible to do so. Like, what are you going to say? Yeah, I know. Love and I'm, I'm awful at that. I'm, I'm 38 and I'm awful at like when I've signed birthday cards to, I'm like, say something uh, yeah, meaningful. Yeah. Say something meaningful besides happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> or especially like condolences are the worst too. It's like, what do you, oh. what do you even say on a condolence card? Uh, and then you see everybody else has already said the different things you can say. Like, All right, I'll just repeat something. Yeah, that's cool. I think you're the first person who um, maybe Lauren had it too, but I think you were one of the first people who actually found the yearbook. Yeah, signature. That's so. good times. And yeah, I it's one thing. It was funny because we we looked through my senior yearbook, and my brother was actually in my senior yearbook because he was a freshman when mm -hmm. I was a senior. But he was on varsity soccer, so it was fun ah, to see him. Reed. So yeah. he passed away last year, so it was kind of oh, cool to see that. Really, I did not realize that. Yeah. Uh, he had some problems with alcohol. It was liver cirrhosis. Mm. So. That yeah, that's rough. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, it's um yeah, it's been a thing. <laughs> yep. What so, about your folks? Are they still? 
they're still down there. Uh, they the live in North Texas or North Fort Worth, kind of almost they're People keep thinking it's Keller because there's like this little finger of Fort Worth that sticks yeah. up in the middle of Keller. So they're they're up there, and uh, yeah, we're trying to convince them to move to Boise. Nice. How far away from you? How far away from Boise did you say you were? About an hour and a half. Okay, that's not bad. Is that where the target is? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Boise Idaho target. Yeah. When you when you're feeling really bougie, drive ninety minutes. Yeah. It's really, it's, it takes a long time to feel bougie out here. <laughs> yeah, right. The things that I have said, though, since moving up here is, is astro like, the things that come out of my mouth are just, I don't even know, like, where they come from. Like, would you get out of the cow pen? That cow just gave birth. Stay away from all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. I I'd have to be concerned about that with my children. There are, yeah, just. My cat yesterday, so. <laughs> get out of the cow pen it just gave birth what do you, you know you know you can't go into postnatal cow pen <laughs> there are just in par parenting in general there are some interesting things you say to your kids that you never thought you would say mm -hmm. uh i can't remember any examples now of course but oh my my vivid one is um you cannot pinch your sister in the mouth even if she asks you to <laughs> Because Brooke had a loose tooth and she, she wanted it out. And so my son was joking about like, hey, I'll punch you in the face and knock it out. And she's like, yeah, punch Do me. It. And it worked. <laughs> we lost the tooth. And so we had to make a house rule of you're not allowed to punch anybody, even if they, they ask, ask you, you to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't it think didn't that work. had to be a rule. <laughs> Did she have like a bruise or anything from it? No, he, I. I I think it was loose enough that yeah, like it just knocked out. came out, but like, yeah, he, he's a pretty, he's a pretty, pretty gentle kid. So, but I mean, he's still a boy, but I mean, like right. he's not, yeah. he didn't take full license with it. <laughs> just want, oh, really yeah. wind back and give it to her. <laughs> I mean, I think he definitely popped, but it didn't leave a bruise, but she did lose the tooth. So nice. Yeah, they, my kids get so anxious about it. I remember one time I was just helping Marva dry off after the shower, and all I had to do was kind of run the towel kind of close to her mouth, and it just flew out because she was like, had really got <laughs> so loose. I'm like, that thing's going to get infected or something. You just leave it in there like that. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Uh, that stuff gives me all like the worms in my stomach. So mm -hmm. the kids are like, look, I have a loose tooth. I'm like, oh, that looks fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Over my eyes. <laughs> Have you have you gone down the trypophobia uh, rabbit hole like on YouTube and stuff? Have no. you heard that term? Trypophobia no. is like the fear or on discomfort when you see like holes in people's skin. So you can you can oh. Photoshop like a lotus seed uh, pod, you know, where the like there's like the little seed. And I'm getting itchy thinking about it now. But uh, <laughs> where you get the like seeds in, inside the crevices of the lotus thing, and if you photoshop it onto somebody's like skin it looks like there's stuff embedded that you just really need to get out of the skin like bugs right like where we've evolved no to, yeah like, i'm getting like all the worms yeah, and my yeah, stomach yeah. just talking about that but there's all sorts of like videos you can watch that'll trigger it and it's not healthy so don't do it <laughs> all right so i have your quiz it's only five questions okay. but okay. as a founding member of the pda pda patrol i figure that i should give you a quiz about public displays of affection and laws surrounding public displays of affection so these are all texas criminal law so just uh keep that in mind okay all right number one okay so texas not oregon correct <laughs> correct there's a lot of difference yeah according to texas criminal law a person commits public blank if he or she knowingly engages in sexual intercourse deviate sexual intercourse i.e oral and anal sex and any sexual contact i.e any touching of private parts to a tour arouse or satisfy sexual urges in a public place. That is called public blank. A, voyeurism, B, lewdness, C, pornography, or D, R-ratedness. Ooh, it's either A or B. I think it's B. Correct, public lewdness, okay. which is the legal, <laughs> the legal term for PDA. Number two, a blank means any area where there is a group of people or where the public has access to, such as public parks and outdoor spaces, public restrooms, or common areas of an apartment complex. A blank means that A, private place, B, lame space, C, public place, or D, safe space. Public place. Correct, public place. 
where you are not supposed to take part in public lewdness. Number three, <laughs> true or fa false, the inside of a vehicle located in a parking lot or on a roadway can be considered a public place. True. True, yes. I found that out the hard way. Number four. You, no, I didn't. Have, <laughs> I did have, I knew somebody who, I won't say names, but uh, they engaged in acts in a car in the Donna Park Elementary parking lot and got the police like knocking on the window like, hey, they just, they just sent him away. They didn't get a ticket or anything, but yeah. anyway. All right, number four. You can be charged with public lewdness in a non-public place where... Right, so it's like you can actually be charged with this even if it's at a private place if or where a you recklessly ignored the risk that another person might be alarmed or offended by the sexual act b the sexual act is so profane that even your partner realizes it's wrong <laughs> c you filmed the sexual act and then displayed it on a pornographic venue d you yourself have multiple personalities and those other selves are subjected to the lewd behavior what C porn are you filming it incorrect it is a. oh it's okay if, i was if, thinking a or c but yeah. <laughs> if like you're in the living room of an apartment where somebody else lives and they walk in on you you can still technically be charged again found that out the hard way number five in texas <laughs> public lewdness is a class a misdemeanor that carries a jail term of up to one year and a maximum fine of a four thousand dollars B, $5,000, C, $6,000, or D, $7,000? 5000 sounds like a nice round number. Ooh, close. It was 4000 Ah. All right, three out of five. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. For you not being... I'm just, right. I'm just, I'm just risk at risk for being charged with <laughs> behavior in Texas, evidently. I'm just too used to these hippie organ ways. Yeah, yeah. They're much more <laughs> open about it, aren't they? Oh, that's funny. Well, this was fun. We gotta. Yeah. We have to get actually. So next time you're in Texas, let us know. We'll all get together. Yeah. We'll track down yes. Amy. I got. I can't find her on Facebook or anything. So I, I actually. I actually had the thought of writing uh, a letter to her dad's address because I still remember that. Well, they. So she and Steve and I. Well, I don't want to give out too much information, but I think they lived together in a house close to us at one point. But we just mm -hmm. haven't seen them. So anyway. Mm -hmm. Just go start knocking on doors. <laughs> Are you Does Amy? Amy here? <laughs> You're, my neighbors told me not to talk to you, not to answer your door. <laughs> all right, Claire. Well, I'll let you get back to running your successful businesses and all of that jazz and the kids. Yep. So, yep. And I'll... So are you, so you're teaching at a private school now, right? Yeah. I taught at Grayfond Colleyville for a while. My cat's biting me now to be pet. Uh, yeah. I taught at Colleyville and then stepped back from full time and kind of got headhunted by this um, private school. It's a really small school in Euless, right, right by Trinity High School, actually, like just down the street. And mm -hmm. they do, it's like a soccer school. So it's for kids who want to play professionally and get really elite training. So they like train soccer in the morning. And then there's the full high school curriculum oh, after cool. training and stuff. So I just teach, I only teach two classes uh, a week. So I have two sections of the ninth grade English. Um, so it's a pretty mm -hmm. sweet gig. I come in, plan, teach and leave. Uh, awesome just kind of how it should be <laughs> i think you'd be a really fun english teacher by the way mark i've had a i've uh, i think my students have liked me right that's pro in fact that's probably my greatest strength and weakness is that i'm sometimes probably <laughs> too much about making them laugh and having fun and should probably focus a little more on the english sometimes but well the th you forced me to learn in english because i hated english <laughs> and i appreciate it very much <laughs> because it has served me well <laughs> i did have after i took the sat with some of some uh, ld bell kids i remember right after we left it may have even been you or somebody was like hey mark i got that comma question right because of you because you <laughs> i, was like, I yeah. actually remember to, I, thanking you for that because yeah. there were there were there have it is amazing the number of things in my life even now i'm like i read things i'm like I, if, if it wasn't for Mark Dye, I wouldn't realize that that was wrong. <laughs> yes, I'll take it. I'll take it. We'll leave on that note. Love yeah. it. All right. Well, thanks for doing this, Claire. Giving me an hour of your time. And uh, I'll Perfect. see you maybe at the reunion. Let's do it. Yes. Let's do so it. Let we'll me know figure that time. out. So. All right. All right. We'll talk Bye. to you later, Mark. Thanks. All right. That was the show. Thanks for listening, everyone. Today's episode was recorded by Mark Dye. 
Our editor is Mark Dye, and he is also the executive producer. The intro and outro music was composed by Mark Dye in high school. It's really just me doing this. To support the How the Heck Have You Been podcast, visit artbymarker.com and buy some cool art. Thanks, y'all.